Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here I make videos all about my life as an Orthodox Jewish homeschooling mother of four. And in today's video, we're going to be going over all of our plans for homeschooling for this year. That's right, folks. Today we're going to be covering all the homeschooling things. All right, so we're going to be covering all of our curriculum choices, all the subjects that we're going to be covering, all of our like in general plans for this year, our schedule for the day, our schedule for the week, uh, just like literally all the things. Oh, and a fun new morning time thing that we're going to be doing this year. We're going to see how this works out. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, so to start with, I did print off a calendar for myself and I picked the weeks that I'm planning on doing homeschool this year. So with the weeks that I chose, that gives us 36 weeks, that's 170 days of school for this year, and that is flexible because everything we do is flexible. With that planned out, I'm confident that we will have the time to cover all the things that I have planned. I just feel like it's a good idea to go ahead and plan that out, especially with the amounts of holidays that we have throughout the year as Orthodox Jews. All right, the next thing that I did in my planning was I made a spreadsheet. And the spreadsheet has a column for all of the subjects that we're doing this year, a column for the number of lessons each week that I'm planning to do for that subject, and then another column for whatever we're using to teach that subject, whether it is a book of poetry for poetry or a textbook for Jewish law or whatever. I have all those things listed in that last column. So that way I'm kind of organized. And then I get to start gathering all of the materials, which is all here behind me. All right, and that brings us to our planning for the week. I have made a schedule for each day of the week that we plan to do our homeschooling stuff. We homeschool Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday so that I can have Fridays off so that we can all get ready for Shabbat. Of course, we don't do school on Saturdays because that is Shabbat. Okay, so let's go through the weekly schedule. So we start with wake up, breakfast, prayer, going for a walk, and then we start our group lessons. That's every morning. Okay, so the first lesson is our morning time stuff, and I will get to that here in a minute, and that's all of us together. The next lesson we have is Parsha, which is where we're going through the Torah portion of the week, and that is also a group lesson. Next one is poetry, another group lesson, and then another group lesson of science, and finally a group lesson of our composer study. Then we do chores and play until lunch. Then it's lunch, piano practice, math, which is an individual lesson, then reading, which is an individual lesson, and handwriting, which is also an individual lesson. And I can do those individual lessons with all of my kids sitting together at the table doing their own work. And I'm just there supervising and helping and teaching as needed. Then it's playtime until dinner and then ready for bed. And then we finish our day by cozying up in my bed for a family read aloud. All right, Monday, same routine. Wake up, breakfast, pray, walk, morning time, Parsha, poetry. Then we do a history lesson. Then it's chores, playtime, lunch, piano practice, math, reading, then it's Hebrew and Halakha, which is Jewish law. And then playtime, dinner, ready for bed, family read aloud. So if you're seeing a theme here, it's group lessons in the morning and then the individual lessons in the afternoon. But again, we're all doing the same thing at the same time. Okay, now we're on to Tuesday. Pretty much the same routine here. Uh, the morning time, the Parsha, which is the weekly tour portion, poetry, artist study, and then geography. And then in the afternoons on Tuesday, we don't do any individual lessons. We take Tuesday afternoons off to spend time outdoors in nature. The rest of the time is the same. The lunch, the family read aloud at night, all of those things. All right, on Wednesdays. Wednesday mornings are the same morning routine as every other day, wake up, breakfast, pray, walk, morning time, the Parsha, which is a weekly Torah portion, then poetry, and then history, chores, playtime, lunch. And then after lunch, we're trying something new this year called Shakespeare Club. I'm super stoked about this. We're gonna just start learning Shakespeare together. And instead of calling it a lesson, I'm calling it Shakespeare Club. All right, so after Shakespeare Club, we dive back into our individual lessons of math, reading, and handwriting. Then it's playtime and piano lessons, dinner ready for bed, family read aloud. Thursday, our last school day of the week. Wake up, breakfast, pray, walk, morning time, 
group lessons of poetry, geography, and drawing. And then we have chores and playtime to lunch. Then it's piano practice, then individual lessons of math, reading, Hebrew, and Jewish law. Then it's playtime. And here's another fun thing that I have planned this year, symposium. It's a word that somebody else was using for something similar. I uh, liberated the idea and <laughs> <laughs> incorporated it into our homeschooling. And basically what symposium is going to be is us sitting around the table, having a nice snack, maybe some tea and discussing something in current events at an age appropriate level for my kids. And then it's dinner ready for bed and family read aloud. All right, and so, and then I have just these pretty sheets for each day, and then they're in these cool plastic protectors, so I can just hang them up on a thumbtack on the wall each day, and that way the kids know what's going on, they know what's coming up next, and I can also glance at it, and I don't have to think about what we're doing that day. Okay, let's dive a little bit more into the content of everything. Okay, so starting with the morning time. I saw this super fun idea of using these menus, so like morning menus uh, for the kids, and I just thought this would be a neat thing. So let me flip the camera around and show you what it is. All right, so I have one of these for each of my kids and they're not really too different. My younger two have exactly the same and my oldest is just slightly different. Okay, so cute cover and then we open it up and we've got the Pledge of Allegiance to start our day and then a weather sheet. So because these menu pages have these like plastic sheets to put everything in, we're gonna be able to use dry erase markers to do this. So basically I'm gonna set up a weather station outside. I've got a rain gauge and a thermometer. And so I will attach both of those to our fence outside and they'll be able to you know, look out the window, circle the weather, rate the date and record the temperature. All right, on the next page, one of the things that I felt we lost last year was singing lessons. And so I wanted to incorporate that back. So we're gonna start our morning with learning a song. This year we're starting with the Star Spangled Banner. Next up, we've got their poems. And so this is where it gets different between the two kids. Okay, so for my oldest, he's learning the Jabberwocky and he's gonna be reciting this and memorizing this. And for my little two, they're going to be learning How Doth the Little Crocodile. Both of these are by Lewis Carroll, who is our first poet that we are studying this year. All right, the next couple of pages of my oldest son's menu is just a list of fourth grade sight words for reading. So we're just gonna be able to go through this. He'll be able to spend a little bit of time going through this. And if there's a word he's not sure about, he can ask me and he'll just work on learning these sight words. Same for my next two. So I've got a kindergarten and first grade list of sight words here for my daughter. And for my youngest, he has a pre-kindergarten list of sight words and an alphabet sheet to work on those. And then the last page, which is the same for everybody, has some information on Lewis Carroll, the poet that we are studying this term, as well as Mary Stevenson Cassatt, who we are also studying this term in our artist study. All right, so that is our morning time time <laughs> those menus and i'm pretty excited about that i think the kids will enjoy it and it will incorporate back in some things that i really enjoyed in our homeschool that we lost last year with all of the changes that we were making all right so now let's dive into the curriculum choices that i'm using for each of the subjects that we are covering this year Okay, for our first subject, Parsha, we are gonna continue using the Rabbi Juraval books for Parsha. I really enjoy these. I love the way that he tells the story in these books. There's a lot of extra information throughout as well as illustrations and extra stories. So it's really been a really great book for us to use for Parsha for homeschool. Now, for my oldest, we're doing things just slightly differently. He will continue to hear the Parsha from this book with us, but he'll also be reading on his own in the Chumash, which is the actual text from the Torah scroll, as well as commentary and the translation in English. So he'll be able to read both and then get questions answered from the commentary, and then we can discuss together. All right, next subject we're we'll cover is Hebrew. And for that, we'll be using the Bright Beginnings for my daughter and another book called Aleph Isn't Tough for learning to read Hebrew. So as soon as she finishes that, we'll move on to this. And this will start teaching about root words and grammar and things like that and help her work on translating sentences. My oldest son will be working with a private tutor this year for his Hebrew, so I'm pretty excited about that. And I'm so excited to see like how he progresses in Hebrew now that he's moved off of my level of Hebrew. 
All right, for our next subject, it is Jewish law. We call it halakha. And for that, we will be using the Yachadut books. So these are really beautiful textbooks that have really well-planned lessons where I can go through and teach my son Jewish law. It brings in a lot of different stories and tidbits of information. We used this book last year and it was incredibly good for us. And so we will continue to use it this year. So we'll finish the level one book because we're almost finished with it. And then we will move on to book two. Okay, also with our Judaic curriculum, my son will be learning Gemara. He will be doing that with a private tutor as well. And then my oldest son and my daughter will both be learning Navi, which is the books of the prophets, and they'll be learning that with me. All right, for composer studies, what I have done is just chosen three composers to study. We're gonna be doing Mendelssohn, Schumann, and Litzt. And so we'll do one of those per term. If I need to add another composer in later in the year, I will. Okay, now for math, we're gonna continue using the good and the beautiful for math. We have really enjoyed this last year. It worked out really, really well for us. I love how the lessons are set up, which is nice short lessons. It uses the spiral, so it's constantly going back, doing reviews, and there are also occasional tests throughout the curriculum. Um, I love that it's just open and go. It's very easy for us to use. The Good and the Beautiful is a Christian curriculum company. However, in the math in particular, I have found extremely minimal Christian content. What little is in there is something about how God made the flowers beautiful or something. And I'm like, yeah, he did. We're cool with that. Or it might mention like, like a word problem with Christmas cookies. And so I just simply edit that out and I just talk about the word problem with cookies. So we have not had an issue with the math from this company. It's a great program. We really love it. And we're excited to use it again this year. All right, for our next subject, reading. We are going to be using the pinwheel program for learning to read and I'm really excited to start this one. We tried a different reading program last year with my daughter and I just really was not happy with how that was working out for her, even though it worked out beautifully with my son, but every kid is different. So we're switching to this one this year for her and I think it's gonna be a much better fit for her. And even though a lot of it will be a review, I think it's gonna be a really good program for her. And, and for my oldest son, when it's time for us to do our individual reading lessons, he will just take a book and go read independently on his own. It's more about reading time for him and not about about learning to read because he knows how to read. All right, next up is handwriting. I have all kinds of resources here that I wanted to use for handwriting this year. For my very youngest, he will be doing the Good and the Beautiful pre-writing for Littles Part Two and then the Level K. Again, these are a Christian company, but these particular books do not have Christian content. What I like about them is the way they have the arrows that point exactly how to form the letters. And there's also some drawing things just to help uh, work those muscles in little kids' hands. For my daughter, I just picked up this print handwriting workbook for kids off of Amazon, just for her to practice a little bit of handwriting there. And then for my oldest, we are starting cursive this year. He's a huge Harry Potter fan. So I picked up the Harry Potter's Hogwarts Homework Cursive Handwriting Practice Workbook off of Amazon. So after he will be learning just the letters, it moves on to copying some different quotes from the movies and the books and things like that. So I think this will be really fun for him and he will enjoy that quite a bit. And then I just have a few other workbooks in here in case we need to switch or if we just want something different one day, as well as some things that we tried last year that didn't work out as well for us. But if we decide to go back or if anybody just wants to work on these books, I am fine with that too. All right, next up is poetry. Our poets for this year are Oliver Wendell Holmes, Lewis Carroll, and Robert Burns. So I just picked up a book of poetry from each of these poets. So these two books were just purchased off of Amazon. And then this last one here from Oliver Wendell Holmes, I was having trouble finding a book of his poetry that I really liked. So I picked this one up from Simply Charlotte Mason. All right, for science, we will be continuing to use the good and the beautiful for science this year. I've chosen three unit studies to cover during our different terms this year. And yeah, I'm just super excited about these. I got them all organized already, laminating and cutting things out that we need for our various lessons. Um, Again, this is a Christian company. There is some Christian content in the science. However, it's a lot of like God created the world sorts of things, which we are totally on the same page with. 
I, I did not see anything problematic in these three units for us. We will be studying birds first because we're big bird fans in our family and then reptiles, amphibians and fish and water and our world. Along with the science, I've also got a couple of nature notebooks here for my older kids, as well as a bird watching notebook for my son. We did get the extra books for the reptiles and amphibians, as well as for the bird units. And we have a game that goes with the bird unit as well. This is all from The Good and the Beautiful. For our artist studies this year, I already mentioned Mary Cassatt. She is gonna be our first artist that we are studying. And we also have uh, Van Gogh and Monet. So those are the three artists that we have decided to study for this year. These sets all came from Simply Charlotte Mason. What I love about these sets are the really high quality prints that come with, as well as a book that goes through with obviously a picture of the artist, as well as information about the artist and how to use the artist studies. All right, moving on to geography this year, we're going to be using the Simply Charlotte Mason's Visits to series, uh, starting with North America and then doing South and Central America and Australia this year. We started the North America one at the very end of last year. We loved it, but because we've had this big break of summer, I'm gonna go ahead and start it over again at the beginning. These are the two main textbooks that go with that. We really enjoyed those last year, what we did do of them, and I'm excited to dive back in more this year. And we also picked up the extra books that go along with this unit so that we can just enhance our learning a little bit more. And I am just such a fan of a good picture book and a good read aloud. quick peek inside these books. These are great because they have really short lessons, which I love, like literally like two pages for most of the lessons. They include map work, which I'm a huge fan of map work for my kids. And then also includes here the recommended reading if we're reading the extra books, which we are. So these are really short, great lessons, 10, 15 minutes max, and we can read the picture books anytime we want to throughout our day. For our Shakespeare, we are going to be doing a Midsummer's Night Dream. I have purchased the Simply Charlotte Mason's study of Midsummer's Night Dream, which includes both a story of Midsummer's Night Dream and then the entire script. I've also picked up this version of A Midsummer's Night Dream by Bruce Cavill, which came highly recommended on a lot of podcasts and we'll be able to read this as a picture book as well, which I think the kids will really enjoy. And then at the end, I'd like to watch a movie if I can find one that's appropriate or go see the live play. And this is something we'll be working on the entire year. All right, for drawing lessons this year, we got this from The Good and the Beautiful. It's just like a little, very easy level one drawing book that includes step-by-step -step instructions to some very simple drawings. And we're just gonna continue working through this book this year through our drawing lessons. All right, as a final subject, we are doing history. We are gonna be doing history through Story of the World. We switched to this mid-year last year, and we're going to continue working through this. So we're currently on volume three, Early Modern Times times and when we're finished with this book we'll move on to volume four which I have already purchased and along with this we are going to be using the activity books. These books tell history like a story which I really love. They include a lot of maps and a few pictures as well. And then here in the activity books for each chapter they'll have a list of questions that we can ask along with the answers as well as some additional history reading uh, corresponding literature selections, map work, and projects. What we will typically do out of these is the map work and the coloring page, some of the questions, and possibly a literature choice if we're looking for a good read aloud that we would like, or if my kids just want to deep dive. And then in the back of this book, they do have the map pages that I can just copy and give to my kids and the coloring sheets. And so what I'll do a lot of times with these coloring sheets is I'll give the coloring sheets to my children with some watercolor paints, and then they will paint the coloring sheets because they love to paint while I'm reading the history lesson to them. So that helps them stay focused and occupied while I'm doing the reading. 
All right, so that is all of our curriculum choices for this year. Other things that we do that are, to me, schoolwork, but to my kids are just really fun things, are we do household chores together. We also do a lot of cooking together or independently, depending on what age and maturity level my kids are at. We also do our nature journals together, a lot of time outside just being in nature. And also in our free time in the afternoons or evenings, we'll do handicrafts together. I haven't picked any set handicrafts that I want to do this year. It's just gonna be whatever my kids want to do. I have all the crafty things in this room and I'll be able to help them explore their interests that way. And as I mentioned earlier, the kids are taking piano lessons and we do our family read alouds in the evening. Now, I think I will be adding another family read aloud to our morning time. And so what I'm thinking to do for our morning time reading is to add in a chapter a day from the Little House on the Prairie series so we can just continue working through that series together. We've been trekking through that for a year or two now. <laughs> Now, if I feel that we need to add something else in for language arts that we're not getting through the other subjects that we're doing, because I will just incorporate language arts elements into everything because that's just how I am. But if I feel like we need something a little bit more specific, then we'll do some of the darts from the Brave Writer. And if we're needing some fun project ideas, we'll dive into the writing projects from the Brave Writer. All right, now I know that probably seems like a lot of stuff that we're doing. However, our lessons are short. And as you saw, we are not doing everything every day. Things are spread out. I think the only thing we're doing every day is poetry, but that's literally just reading a poem and moving on. <laughs> maybe a quick discussion, but we're talking five minute max for poetry lessons. So yeah, our lessons are short. Very few subjects do we do every day and we just kind of cover everything throughout the week. And if you're wondering how all of this fits together into an actual real life school day, make sure that you are subscribed because pretty soon I have a video coming up where I'll be filming our first day of school as sort of a day in the life. And you'll see how all of this comes together and fits in for school in our actual real lives. If you have any questions about what we're doing or if you'd like more information, please drop me a note in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. I will also include links in the description box below to any of these curriculums that I can find that are available and I will put those there for you if you're interested in trying any of these in your own homes. All right, and with that, I have a feeling Baby Firefly is about to wake up, so I have run out of time for filming this video, which is good because I am done. So with that, I will call this video a close. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It helps my channel out a lot, and it lets me know what kinds of videos you guys like to see. And with that, we're calling this video a close. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in my next upload. Hello. Oh, hey. <laughs> you trying to make your filming debut? And in today's video, we're going to be talking about all. And in today's video, we're going to be talking.